Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Ken, a man of the Great Refuge Temple here in the city of Jacksonville, Florida. What a delight and an honor it is to be able to come to you by way of social media today. Amen. On this blessed first Sunday, we want to thank those who have contributed to the kingdom and to, amen, to the ministry during this time of our being absent, amen, from the church. But we thank God for social media that we're able to keep in touch with one another, amen, by the grace of God. So we thank you for your gifts, your tithes, your offerings, amen. We thank you for how you bless the kingdom, amen, and bless the work of the Lord. So may God continue to bless you and to keep you as our prayer. And don't forget to reach out to at least three people this week, amen, and contact them and let them know, amen, of the goodness and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing it would be, amen, that God would bless some heart to be touched by you, amen, as we go through these times. So we ask in the Great Refuge Temple in Lakeland as well as Jacksonville, amen, and the Florida Diocese to reach out and touch someone, amen, at least three people if you can. So we're grateful to God today. Don't forget to share, hit the like button, Amen. And let someone know the Great Refuge Temple family is on the air. And there's a miracle coming in their direction. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, for your great compassion that faileth not, but is renewed day by day. We thank you for grace, for mercy. We thank you for helping us, for blessing us, making a way for us. We pray today, Lord, that you bless, oh God, those who are going through in this time of pandemic, we pray for our first responders, for our, our, our amen, doctors, our nurses, and those, amen, who must respond even in the emergency department. We pray today, Lord, that you would touch and bless them and help them, even those who serve us, Lord. Keep them well, oh God, keep them safe. And we pray you're saved, you are healed, delivered. You are blessed as we come to the take of your broken body today. Amen. We will find healing and deliverance in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you glory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to our Great Refuge Temple Lakeland our Church family where our District Elder Jeff Davis will come uh, with the Holy Scripture. Praise the Lord, everyone, and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture this morning will be coming from the 8th chapter of Romans, verse 24 through 32. And it reads, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. But what a man saith, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that, we see not. Then we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also help us in our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes its intercessions for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? We thank God for the reading of his scripture. May God bless us in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. 
Because you were there for me when I needed it most. Because when you say you'll pray for me, I know you will. Because you always point me back to Jesus. Because you preached that message right when I needed it. Because you've helped make our church a family. Because it's not just a high calling, it's hard work. Thanks, Pastor. Thank God for the wonderful amen, scripture and for, amen, our choir today. Amen. We thank God for the wonderful songs of 
of Zion. So we're making ready for the word of the Lord. Amen. And our pastor's coming. Amen. Apostle Dr. General Gruber to give us a word from the Lord today. Amen. And to lead us into our Holy Communion service on this afternoon. So may the Lord bless you today in a mighty way. Amen. We have another selection and the next voice will be that of our beloved pastor, Apostle Dr. General Gruber. One man sat alone beside the highway.
for the opportunity to come your way once again with the Word of God. May the Lord keep on keeping us looking up and looking to Him for life, peace, and furtherance in the gospel of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you as we go to the Word of God I want to thank you for tuning in. May the Lord uh, continue to bless us to connect this way so we can hear from God. Uh, we can together go into the Word of God and learn and be furthered by the gospel of Jesus Christ to where he wish to take us. So we're traveling with the Lord, and so may the Lord bless us to understand that and to be in tune with him in every way. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd like to take you to a passage of Scripture that uh, continues to bless my heart. And it is from the Gospel of St. Luke, the, the first chapter, verses 7 to 7 through 7 to 9. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to give our feet into the way of peace, to guide our feet into the way of peace like to use for topic uh, guidance by divine illumination. The vision of the kingdom is our topic throughout 2020. As the Lord put in my heart and seeing scripture and expressions by different ones and listening closely to the voice of God. Uh, it's in my heart to give ourselves the, the ongoing focus of that which is beyond where we are that which takes us beyond ourselves and even beyond where the Lord has brought us because he wants more for us than what he has given us. So he filled us with the Holy Ghost, which is the very beginning of our salvation. 
It was through repentance and baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God giveth others. So he filled us with his Spirit. That is the beginning of life in God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And through repentance and by repentance, which is making an about faith, turning around from the way that we were going, and going with God, following the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. They are God's children now. So he is preparing us to perform as a member of his body. So he is continuing to take us to new understanding, to new vision, that that we have not yet seen yet. So this is what we have to come to understand and lock into. We have not arrived when the Lord filled us with his Holy Spirit. It is just the beginning. It is not what it was all about. It was not the, the calling of God to be filled. Uh, and then we would have arrived. But God's coming into our lives through repentance is preparing ourselves to journey to another place in understanding and service to the kingdom of God. He said to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of our God whereby the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Here we see the Lord appearing uh, and the prophet of God recognizes the coming of God to give light and to give insight into how to walk with him, how to walk in peace, how to achieve peace in our lives. Peace can be enjoyed by the children of God. It, it does not depend upon our external situation and the attacks of the enemy. Peace is not the result of tranquility from the external. Peace is the result of our knowledge of God and where we have journeyed in understanding uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as we move in God and, and we become more intimate with him, he gives us uh, the peace that passes all understanding. It cannot be understood because of 
trying to see it and understand it from external conditions and situations. It's amazing how the Lord bless us with peace in a trying time such as this now that we are now living in. There's chaos and turmoil on every on every turn. Satan is at work trying to disturb, trying to keep you from enjoying the peace of God. He doesn't want you to be able to feel confident and to know that everything in God is all right because we're serving the Almighty, the Master, the one who loves and cares, the one who is, who is the great I Am, who wants us to know that I am God, and I bring to pass whatever is right for any given time. He is our Lord. He is our salvation. And the prophet goes on to say that through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. The day spring represents the coming of the Lord, coming into our lives, coming to illuminate, coming to give us insight, coming to show us how to advance, how to move forward who will not allow us to be stuck in the past nor the present. But he comes to take us to new heights and new depths. And may the Lord bless us to understand that as we live for him. He's a gracious God. Verse 97 or 79 says that to give light to them that are in darkness and in the shadow of death. It is those who have not yet come to know the Lord through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Light comes with the Holy Ghost. Before there were the indwelling of God's presence, there is no light. There is no real light. It's glimpse of what the will of God is to bring you into the light. For the Lord wants us to come to see him and to know him so that he can give us light to live on and to increase in knowledge and understanding to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to give our feet into to guide our feet rather into the way of peace the Lord want us to know that he's able to give unto us directions that every step that we make it will be a step toward further knowledge and understanding, more comforting, more aware of God's will and God's presence so that we will not be fearful of whatever may come because we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? What a blessing it is for us to understand that it's all about journeying with the Lord. 
journeying with a knowledge of his presence, journeying as the Lord calls us to understand and to see. He wants us to understand. He wants us to, to look beyond ourselves and to know that there is more for us, more knowledge, more anointing, more joy. It belongs to the children of God. And according to St. John 16, 12 and through 13, 15, I have said many things to say. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. And verse 15 says that all things that the Father has a mind, therefore, set out that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. It is the will of God to bless us at the time that it is that we have reached a level of of perfection. Here the Lord is saying that we were not ready for it in the sense that there are things that is so awesome until if he presents this prior to our season and our time it will some way cause us to feel that it's not possible. But the Lord knows how and when to begin to release himself to his children so they may say, oh, now I understand. He will guide you into all truth. And he shall not speak of himself, as the Lord says to his disciples, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. This is what the Holy Ghost is given to us for, that we will see what is to be the Holy Ghost given to us on a given time was not the end of the journey, but the beginning. And he wants us to know that as we follow the, the direction of the Holy Ghost and begin to listen closely and to be prayerful and be thankful for having received the Lord in our lives, and then begin to hunger for more. The Bible says that they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. And the Lord will continue to increase us that we may become more prepared to receive and to operate on another level of understanding God taking us places, showing us things that we have never seen before. 
May we believe God for a better day, a better understanding. May we look beyond and just trust God for growth and development that we may continue to move in him. As the scripture says, I read verse 14 once again, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. The Holy Ghost, when I understand better of what I receive the Holy Ghost for, then I can be, bring greater glory to God. And this is the results of how well I walk before God, how well I obey God, how, how well I move with God. It, it brings glory to Him. He is glorified because I have become more knowledgeable of him and he wants me to bring glory unto him. All things that the Father has a mind. Verse 15, Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. The Holy Ghost is that presence of God that will take what is to be given to us. It will take and then we will be receptive of it because we are waiting for it. We are hungry for new insight. We do not wish to stay where we are, but we want more of what God has given us in the way of understanding how to bring glory to him. So we are so blessed to have this opportunity to move to new places in God spiritually and to find a place of peace and tranquility, a place where, where God will give unto us the comfort that is unusual in serious situations. We, we would be calm when we would have been frustrated and frightened, fearful, but God has brought us to a place where we can enjoy tranquility, peace, and know that if God be for us, who can be against us? He's with us at all times. The Bible tells us that he is a present help in the time of trouble. May we trust, may we believe, and know that he has spoken, and his word will not return void. According to Isaiah 30 and 21, the Bible says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left hand. It's, it's, God is, wants us to know that he will guide, direct, and show us how to reach the next uh, intimate place with him. Uh, he would give directions to our feet, our steps, is ordered by the Lord. The Bible tells us the steps of the Lord is ordered by the Lord. The steps of the man. God orders our steps. May he bless us to understand. 
that he is with us all times to see to it that we become intimate more aware more in touch with what is his purpose and plans for our lives as we journey on with him. Colossians, the first chapter, in verse 26, the Bible says, Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. The Lord want to make known what has not been known. He is in the process of informing and illuminating and enlightening us. Verse 27 says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery, this mystery, among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is in the process of taking us to new understandings so that we can be aware and be there for others to encourage and to let them know. There's no time to be fearful. There is no time for a true child of God to be frightened and fearful for whatever comes. Even in the midst of this pandemic, this COVID-19, regardless to how lethal it may be, if God be for us, we are more than a conqueror through him that love us. May we keep our focus upon the Lord and let him take us to new heights and new depths because we are on our way. God has taken us places that we have never been. May we be encouraged. May the Lord bless us to see that we are moving with him and we should not allow ourselves to become troubled because I believe that as great as this pandemic might be and have reached all of the nations of the world, if God wants to stop it, he will do it and no one can stop him from doing it. God is in charge. I believe that he has the last word about everything. If God be for us, I thank God for understanding this, that I'm in his hands. I belong to him. I've been bought with a price and so have you because he filled you with his Holy Spirit and you were baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he spoke through you in another language to assure you that he has arrived. He is in your life. And may you continue to enjoy the presence of God looking for higher heights and deeper depths. Romans, the ninth chapter, and verse 23 and 24. We find these words, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. The Lord want us to know that he called us also, inasmuch as the Israelites, they were 
God's first chosen people, they were to declare him to the world. But for the lack of their continuance and their faithfulness to God, the Lord turned to the Gentiles. And what a blessing it is for us to be called and to be a part of his family, his church. So he said, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Thank God for looking to us. All people is called to God. God wants everyone saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants us all saved. God is awesome enough to save us all. Hosea 6 and 1, the Bible says, Come and, and let us return unto the Lord. For he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his presence. The mercy of God and the compassion of God. He will not be angry always. But God will do things to us to turn us around. He will allow things to happen so that we can understand that we will be encouraged to do the right thing. Let's go back to verse 1 once again. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. I want you in, to speak further on the fact that um, the Lord will suffer us to go through some things only to get our attention and to get us and to help us to understand that he's still God and he loves us. Verse 2, of, after two days will he revive us. Uh, in the third day he will raise us up and he, he shall live and we shall live in his presence. There's always that time period of which the Lord give us to understand that it's time for us to do what is right. And if we do that, the Lord will bless us. And the third verse says, Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, and as the latter and former rain unto the earth. If we go on to know the Lord, in order to know God, we can't stop here. The only way we can know the Lord, we must go on to know the Lord. We can't stop where we are, though the Lord has blessed us, but we must go on 
to know the Lord. We must go on to know the Lord. We must go on to know the Lord. Guidance by divine illumination. God has brought us to where we are. But there's more that God wants us to have. But we must go on to know the Lord. We keep before us the vision of the kingdom. We must reach our final destination, the conclusion of our journey. May the Lord bless and keep you ever looking to the Lord. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray. Father, in the name of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, I want to pray your blessings upon your people every, everywhere. I want you to bless those who are who have contracted the virus and I pray that you would bless them to know that you are our eternal healer. Thank you for healing them, letting them know that it is you who are doing it. Not so much the vaccine, but dear Lord, that you are our vaccine as well. Help us to understand and see that. Let us not be frightened and bothered and worried about a vaccine. But the most important thing is whether we are filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give unto us. Do this, dear Lord, for your children everywhere. They may find some peace and tranquility in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so be it. And until next time, may God richly bless you, is my prayer. Praise the Lord and thank you for joining us. Certainly we received a mighty word from heaven today. Tune in again with us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we are blessed again with a timely and anointed word from heaven and invite someone to join us in worship. Now remember, we have been commissioned to evangelize the world for Jesus Christ. So be sure to do your part this week by calling at least three people and telling them your story and then invite them to join you in worship. And if you have been blessed through this ministry and would like to sow a seed, giving opportunities are on your screen. And don't forget to press the like button or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Dr. Smith and the International Women's Council invites you to join them for their virtual conference on this Thursday through Saturday. The theme, Go Forth. Registration is free, so go to watch.cooljc.org. And it's time for us to enjoy our first virtual Linda's Jubilee. We look forward to a musical celebration like none other. There'll be a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a whole lot of love and lots of fellowship, worship, and praise. So make sure to tune in on next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. And if you are in need of prayer, our pastors and the prayer team are standing by and they would love to touch and agree with you. You may call the church office right now at area code 904-768-4009 or you can inbox us or type your name in the comments. Or if you prefer to send your prayer request via email, you may do so to refugejacks at yahoo.com. We look forward to hearing from you and praying with you. We send our prayers right now to those who are experiencing especially tough times and we also send our heartfelt condolences to the families who are experiencing 
bereavement. So until we see you on next time, as our pastor, the Most Honorable Apostle, Dr. Gentle L. Gruber says, it's getting better all the time. Yeah, take no blue. Yeah, take no blue. Yeah, take no blue.